It's another Sunday afternoon, and as you walk down the hall, you hear a loud boom in the left right corner. Next thing you know, you're on the ground, crawling back up, and all you hear are screams that are deafening you beyond comprehension. You were just at the mall with some friends, and all of a sudden you look to your right, and you find your best friend lying in a pool that seems to be red. You run over to them in shock as their chin goes back and forth as they are terrified about what the next events are to come. They call for help, and what's the first thing you do? You dial 911. However, your friend has already started to lose consciousness, and it's clear that they probably won't make it for the first paramedics to arrive. You sit there and you call out for help, but little did you know that the help could easily have been you. In a world filled with natural disasters, shootings, and even sometimes just a regular car accident, sometimes help can come too late. Although you were sitting there with your friend in your hand, there was something you could have possibly done to save their life. Knowing how to properly create and, do, and tie a tourniquet to a victim is the matter between life and death. Now, before you go around and you start tying things around people's legs and arms, you are actually going to need to know how exactly to go through with this. Now, according to Kimberly Holland of the American Red Cross Association, a total of 60,000 people died due to preventable blood loss just last year. 60,000 fathers, 60,000 mothers, maybe even 60,000 children. All equally tragic. Now, like I said, before you go around tying things to people's arms and legs, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to properly, the, the materials you will need to properly create a tourniquet, how to properly apply one to a victim, and the proper follow-ups to each and every tourniquet victim that you apply it to. Now, although it is always recommended that you have a professional tourniquet, it would seem naive and irresponsible to think that each and every single one of you would have one during a medical emergency, such as now. Now, that, is not, that does not mean that you can't create one of your own. There are three aspects to creating your own tourniquet. First is going to be some sort of material that can vary between ties, shirts, or even a belt. For my example today, I brought three of each individual items. So for the fabric, I brought a tie, as I'm already wearing one, a tie, a shirt, which most of us have on every single day. If you don't, that's a topic for a different time. And then also a belt, which I won't take off as that's a, okay. So <laughs> you have the ability to tie those around there. Now belts are not normally used as tourniquets as they are unable to fully strap the blood flow tight. However, some tourniquet is better than no tourniquet at all. The second thing you will need is a rig rigid object to tighten the fabric beyond what your own hands can do. And that can vary between scissors, a pen, and a pencil. All of which can be found either in your pocket, your next door neighbor that you're sitting next to, or even just a classroom. All three of these are great examples due to their accessibility and how common they are in our everyday lives. Lastly, you will need a securing mechanism, something to keep the windlass, the securing, so the windlass and the fabric into place after you have finished applying it. That can vary from a carabiner, a binder clip, or even a hair tie that most girls and women have on them at all times. If a guy has it, you do you. <laughs> now the second step is actually applying the tourniquet to the victim. So I'm actually going to call Jordan if Jordan could come up here real quick. Jordan, you want to I'm not going to stab you. You're going to be fine. just fine. Now, before we start applying the tourniquet to Jordan, you first want to do the preparations. First and foremost, you want to evaluate and reassess the situation and see exactly where your victim is bleeding from. That can vary from the right shoulder to the left arm. Next, you also want to be, be able to cut off the clothing around the wound as applying a tourniquet onto the fabric will not be as tight as applying to bare skin. Third, you want to measure about two inches above the wound as the tourniquet needs to be placed between the heart and the wound to tighten the blood flow. 
So now we will apply. The, we are, for this example, we are going to use the fabric of the tie. And it seems Jordan got mixed in with the wrong crowd. He stole someone's Ferrari, and now he has a paper cut right here, and he's bleeding from it. So we are going to apply the tie right here. You are going to take your fabric. You're going to make one knot, nice and tight. Then you're going to create a second knot that's going to be loose, that is going to leave a circle in between the initial knot and the second knot. That is where we are going to place our windlass, which is going to be used to tighten the fabric around the extremity. You are then going to take the excess fabric and you're going to wrap it around the windlass. And scissors are a great tool for this due to having them accessible and it gives you more leverage instead of having to use it with pen or pencil, all three of which could be used. You're then going to take the windlass and you're going to turn it. I'm not going to turn it anymore. Okay. You're going to turn it until you can't turn it anymore and then that should slowly have slowed the blood flow or completely stopped it at that point. You are then going to take your securing mechanism and, a, and apply it to the scissors and the fabric to keep it from moving. Now, I remember this, I know it's kind of tight. <laughs> now, after you have officially supplied it, you are to keep it on until paramedics arrive. Now that we have officially finished applying the tourniquet, I'm going to show you guys the follow-up steps to after you have finished applying it. You then want to, again, reevaluate the situation and reassess your victim, make sure they have no other life-altering injuries. And Jordan looks pretty good, you know, no more bleeding besides the haircut, he looks pretty good. Oh. So we are going to then <laughs> move on. <laughs> no other life-threatening injuries, as we can tell. In that case, we are to write the time in which we apply the tourniquet, so then when the paramedics do arrive, we have the ability, they have the ability to see how much blood they could have lost during that time. Now, let's say in the case scenario that he does have another injury. You do not remove the initial tourniquet, you actually create another one, but if you don't have the resources for that, you will then just have to use your hand and put pressure on the wound as much as you can until paramedics arrive. Now that I've shown you how to go ahead and create a, your own tourniquet, whether it's through the first I showed you the materials that you might be able to use, second I showed you how to apply it to a victim, and third I showed you the proper follow-up steps to after you apply the tourniquet. Now you can be a hero at your next family reunion or back to school night. Thanks. Oh.